Hello everyone, and welcome to the Castle Museum of Saginaw County History's annual meeting for the year 2020. I'm your host for this virtual meeting today, and I'm the President and CEO here at the Castle Museum, Jonathan Webb. We welcome you to take a little look through our building, meet some of our staff, meet the board, talk a little bit about the year we had in 2020 and about what we have coming up in 2021. Thanks for joining us. Ah, that's better. Get out of the cold. Well, welcome again to our annual meeting of the Historical Society of Saginaw County. Um, glad you could be with us and, and enjoy this, uh, this meeting with us, even though it is virtual. Uh, obviously, things are going to be a little different because of the way we're doing this meeting today. Uh, but I want to make sure that everyone knows uh, every member, everyone who was a paid member in 2020, uh, will be getting an annual meeting booklet mailed to them, to their home. So you'll be able to, to see in print a recap of the year and uh, a lot of great statistics and, and facts and financial reports and um, all kinds of useful information for you. And those are all coming to you. Um, they've already been printed. They're in the mail system. Not sure exactly um, when they'll be arriving, but it should be soon. Uh, a second thing, and it's kind of a housekeeping thing, is typically uh, we have copies of the minutes from last year's annual meeting for you to read uh, when you arrive at the, this year's annual meeting. And since we're doing this virtually, um, we're going to make those printed minutes available to anyone who would, who would like to have them. Um, and they are available at the museum uh, at the front desk. You can simply request uh, those if you stop in to visit the museum, and we hope you will because we are open and functioning uh, under normal business hours right now. Um, you know, typically we would, we would gather together and have some really nice fellowship with, all of, with our fellow members and, and enjoy a delicious hot lunch, and obviously we can't do that today. But, you know, one of the, one of the advantages of having a, a meeting such as this is that you can hit pause whenever you want uh, and listen to it later or go get yourself a snack or whatever. So, you know, maybe now's a good time to grab something warm to eat on this cold day. And I'm going to turn it over to start the meeting to the Historical Society of Saginaw County's board president, Brian Konechka, who is going to tell us a little bit about why he feels history and this museum in particular are worthy causes. Brian? Hello, everyone. My name is Brian Konechka. I'm the board chair for the Historical Society of Saginaw County. And I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome all of you to our virtual annual meeting. When I was about eight or nine years old, I remember that my dad coming home with a book, a history book of Saginaw. And I remember looking through it for the first time at these old pictures and marveling at how different things looked in present day compared to these images from years ago. And it really got me interested in the history of Saginaw and of Saginaw County. Through the years, I've read many books and, and done research and had many visits to the Castle Museum to learn more about the history of Saginaw. And it got me wondering, well, where do I fit in this story? And, you know, how am I a part of the history of Saginaw? And so, as I dug into the, uh, the family tree, discovered that the earliest ancestors that I have that arrived here in Saginaw is a fellow by the name of John Garstecki and he was my grandmother's grandfather, so my great-great-grandfather. He arrived in Saginaw in 1886. Uh, his wife, my great-great-grandmother, Magdalene, she arrived in 1885. The two of them got married around 1889, and together they owned and operated a farm in Tamath Township at the corner of Pettit and Townline Road. They had nine children together. One of their uh, children, was my great-grandfather, Frank Garstecki. And um, Frank left the farm and went into the city and got a job at one of the planing mills. Tragically though, he lost his right hand in a milling accident. And from that day forward, he became known as One-Armed Frank. That name might sound familiar to some people as uh, he and my great-grandmother, Helen, owned and operated a restaurant on Norman Street on Saginaw's east side the Outer Way Cafe, or as people more commonly referred to it as, one Arm Franks. The restaurant was famous for its fried perch dinners, with a side of coleslaw, rye bread, and ice-cold beer that Frank happily pulled from the tap. On my um, father's side, on the Konechka side of the family, 
I don't have any exact dates yet on exactly when they arrived, but it would have been about the same time, the late 1880s. And my great-grandfather was born in Saginaw in 1899. Uh, they had three children, one of them being my grandfather, Theodore. Uh, when Theodore, he was in uh, World War II, where he served in World War II, he was uh, in the Navy, and he was stationed on, uh, in the Pacific on an aircraft carrier named the USS Saginaw Bay. And that's a story for another day. <laughs> when he returned from the war, he got a job as a postal carrier, and he worked right out of the Castle Museum when it was a post office. My dad remembers, uh, he told me a story once where he went to work with my grandpa. He was probably about five years old, and he just remembers how big the place was. And my grandpa gave him a small bottle of Coke, put him on a stool next to his uh, case where he sorted the mail, and just told him to be quiet. <laughs> um, so, you know, there's the history on that side of the family. Now, on my mother's side, my uh, grandfather, her father, he was born in Yonkers, New York. He eventually went to medical school in uh, Chicago at Loyola, Loyola University, excuse me. And uh, after serving in uh, World War II in Europe as a, uh, as a captain, uh, and, and he was a surgeon in the, in the war, uh, he returned to the United States and eventually he made his way to Saginaw. And he finished up his uh, medical residency at St. Luke's Hospital, where he uh, also served as uh, uh, chief of their board in the early 60s, and he set up a private practice in uh, Bridgeport. His name was Dr. Peter Cassina. And um, he, along with my uh, grandmother, Billy, uh, they operated their small practice uh, right there in Dixie Highway in, uh, in Bridgeport. And it was tru truly a family affair, as my uh, great aunt Agnes was also a nurse in the, uh, in the practice. And going back to my uh, grandfather who was a postal carrier, I guess you could say I come from a long line of postal workers, as my, uh, my mother and my stepfather both also worked at the post office. Now my dad, James, or Jim as he was known, uh, he uh, started out working as a, uh, a uh, carrier for the Saginaw News delivering newspapers. Later he started selling shoes at Fort Saginaw Mall and eventually became a shoe salesman at Town & Country at the mall. So ladies uh, from that era, and if you shop there for shoes, uh, my dad probably sold you some shoes. <laughs> uh, anyway, I guess where I'm getting at is we all have a story to tell and a story to share. And that's what the Castle Museum does is they tell those stories of Saginaw, of the people of Saginaw, the history of Saginaw. And that's why it's so important, this organization, and for you, our members, we're so thankful for your support and for the support of the community. Um, but we all have that story to tell. So regardless of if your family has been here for over a hundred years, like, like mine has, or whether you're new, even if you're new, that's part of your story, that's part of the history of Saginaw. And we all need to celebrate that. So with that, I'd like to also say a big thank you to the voters in Saginaw County who passed overwhelmingly a millage that will support the operations of the Castle Museum back in August. So to you, thank you. I'd also like to say thank you to all of the uh, other members of the Board of Directors and their tireless work and effort volunteering to uh, lead this organization. So to all of them, uh, thank you. I'd also like to have do a, a special thank you to one of our board members, uh, Ken Wellman, who announced his retirement from the board um, at the end of December. And uh, Ken served on the board for, for many, many years, and he was uh, key in leading the membership committee. So members, I know you've gotten letters from Ken over the years to renew your membership, and so thank you to you. And again, thank you for Ken for all of the work that he's done for this organization. I'd also like to say thank you to all of the staff at the museum that keep things running, that uh, put their time and effort into the uh, exhibits, to uh, add new exhibits, to coordinate traveling exhibits. Um, thank you for everything that you do and for keeping the jewel, the Castle Museum, in tip-top shape and, and, and operating smoothly. So to that, I say thank you. And now what I'd like to do is uh, introduce the rest of the board of the Historical Society of Saginaw County. 
Hi, I'm Amy French. I am the former board chair and I currently sit on the executive committee. I'm a history professor at Delta College. I grew up in the city going to the Castle Museum, so it's one of my greatest pleasures to be able to serve on the board in this way. Hi, my name is Brad Jarvis and I'm an associate professor of history at Saginaw Valley State University. I also currently serve on the executive board for the Castle Museum as the vice chairperson. My students and I have spent hundreds of hours um, volunteering our time at the Castle Museum. And I can say that in my personal experience, I've never encountered a staff that is more knowledgeable or better at what they do than that what we have here at the Castle Museum. We really have a jewel uh, with this organization here in the community. And I want to thank you all for your support in making sure that the Castle Museum stays in Saginaw. Good morning, I'm Cheryl Hatzel. I'm a proud member of this uh, Historical Society Board. I've been on this board for five or six years. I look to continue for the next few years. Uh, I was a proud supporter of the Millage. I was one of the sponsors that put it on the ballot as a county commissioner, and I look forward to continued success for this group. Welcome everyone, and thanks for being at our annual meeting. My name is Chip Hendrick. I've been on the board for about 10 years, Sagan Historical Society. Hi, I'm Tamara Carter. I'm a Family Independence Manager at the Department of Health and Human Services, and my husband and I own a small business in the city of Saginaw. I am also on the board for the Saginaw Castle Museum, and I enjoy being on the board. Please bring your family and friends and come see all the exhibits. We have great things in store for you. Greetings, fellow members. My name is Ricardo J. Verdoni. I'm a board member of the Castle Museum, I'm the owner of Verdoni Productions, a video company that produces short documentaries about the history, people, business, and culture of our communities. Have a good day. Hello everyone, I'm Larry Rodarte, and I have been on the Castle Board since 2003. I love history. I am also publisher of Mi Gente Magazine, the statewide Hispanic publication, as well as radio talk show host on WSGW 100.5 FM and 790 AM on their program, Mi Gente on Air. Thanks for supporting the Saginaw Castle Museum. Hello. My name is Fred Borchard. I'm a retired chief judge for the Saginaw Courts. I've been a member of the uh, Saginaw Historical Society for over 23 years. In the past, I've served on a number of committees as well as its president. I want to take this time to thank each and every one of you for your support, not only in this last election that was critical to our, our organization continuing, but also for support in any other means, uh, whether it's financially or serving on committees or volunteering. I hope we have your continued support in the future. If anyone's interested in serving on a committee or uh, one of the boards, uh, please contact us at the museum. I hope to see everyone next year in person. Please stay safe and God bless. Hi, my name is Kathy Gonzalez, and I work for Saginaw Public Schools as the Director of State and Federal Programs and Professional Development. I have served on the board for a year, and I do so because I believe it is very important to keep the history of Saginaw County alive for future generations. The Castle Museum would not, not exist without the support of the citizens. Because of this, many have given much to turn this into a real gem. It has been my privilege to be, see the transition and to enjoy it. My name is Bill Crane. Hi, I'm Jack Taney, the newest board member for the Castle Museum Board of Directors, having been appointed by the Saginaw County Commissioners, where I serve as District 2 Commissioner. Uh, this board is a perfect fit for me because I've been president of the Saginaw County Sports Hall of Fame for the past 14 years, and our museum is located inside the Castle Museum. My full-time job, I'm a senior account executive at Outfront Media, a local outdoor advertising firm. Have a great day. My name is Larry Toft. One of the most meaningful achievements in my 13-year tenure serving on the Castle Museum Board of Directors has been writing two books, one entitled Remembering Our Past, Historic Saginaw Township, and the other Downtown Saginaw, Heart of a Historic City. Thank you, board members. 
And to echo Brian Konechka's thoughts, a special thank you goes to Ken Willman for his 16 years of service to the Board of Directors, many of those as director or as the leader, I should say, of the membership committee. So thank you for all your hard work, Ken. I know that your heart still is with us and Ken intends to continue to volunteer in different capacities with the Historical Society here at the Castle Museum. So thank you very much again, Ken. And now on behalf of the Board of Directors Treasurer, Jill Rodriguez, I'd like to, pre to present the 2020 financial report. We finished the year uh, fiscally sound and within budget again. We continue to monitor our expenses closely and we regularly review interest rates. Uh, we, we apply for and secure grants to assist with operational and project costs. Utilize the skills of our ta and talents of our staff to complete projects and exhibits and to maintain the building uh, using in-house resources as much as possible. And we're constantly researching cost-efficient products and solutions that allow us to accomplish our mission without sacrificing quality. When your annual meeting booklet arrives, you can turn to page 23 to see a detailed financial statement. Uh, in that, you'll see that we far exceeded our projected revenue for the year, which was wonderful, uh, despite all the difficulties that 2020 presented. And we were right almost on target, dead on target on our expenses. So that resulted in a net profit of $122,309.71. Um, that money will then be secured um, and saved for future uh, major uh, renovation projects here at the Castle Museum. And we do have some of those uh, coming here pretty soon. Uh, I guess really though, the one thing I really want to emphasize um, for this year financially wise is that we, you know, secured our millage for the next six years uh, this summer with the summer of 2020 with the vote. So thank you to everyone who was involved in that. We had a ton of people volunteering. Uh, a lot of you members donated money to uh, help us with the campaign. Um, we had just people kind of really came together and that's why we chose this theme of, of, of unity um, for our booklet and, our, um, and kind of all the events that we're holding this year at the museum. Um, but people really came together and got behind us and uh, for all those who put signs in their yards, um, gave us free airtime on radio shows, gave us magazine you know, ads for free, um, word of mouth, knocked on doors, handed out pamphlets, um, all those people, thank you so much. Uh, you have made it possible for us to continue the important work that we're doing for another six years. And so, um, you know, things are looking uh, good for us right now, uh, but we still need to be um, very conscious of maintaining expenses um, at, at reasonable levels. Um, and we have to constantly be vigilant for that. So I, I do promise you that we are vigilant and we will continue to be so and make sure that we are very judicious in how we spend the dollars that the hard-earned taxpayers of Saginaw County have entrusted us with. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to invite you to take a quick walk with me through the first floor of the museum and look at some of the recent upgrades that we've made. Following that short tour, I'm gonna have each of the staff members introduce themselves and tell you a little bit about their area. Let's go. Even though the Castle Museum is one of the most gorgeous buildings in the entire county, we're constantly working to update our exhibits so that we bring you the best, highest quality exhibits that we can do. Last year, we focused on the lower level in the basement with, and finished our coal mining exhibit and our, our foundations exhibit. This year, we're focusing on the main lobby where we redid all of our cases, including refinishing the walls as backdrops, putting brand new tile on the floor, and installing all new electrical and lighting. You can see the effect that this has as part of our companion exhibit to our Play Ball Smithsonian Traveling Exhibit. In addition, in the lobby, we repurposed the old desks in the post office, and they're now wonderful display cases for flat documents. Here we have some blueprints from high schools in Saginaw. And you may notice that we moved our cycle car, one of our favorite exhibits for our visitors, down here to this end, and remounted and redid the signage that goes along with that. We also redid the base for our Lady Justice display and did LED backlighting on that. And we moved our 9-11 display down here and redid that and mounted it with all new lighting and a new case.
One of the projects we focused on this year was converting our former gift shop space into an exhibit gallery. Here you can see our new temporary exhibit about the Mershon Morley portable housing. Another point of emphasis in 2020 was making sure we tell the story of the entire county. Here's a small exhibit featuring the woolen mill in Frankenmuth that celebrated its 125th anniversary. And right next door, we have another exhibit about Bridgeport and its historical society. This exhibit was done in honor and memorial to Diane McCartney, who was the president of the Bridgeport Historical Society who passed away in 2020. Thank you, Diane, for all the work you did to make the Bridgeport Historical Society a successful and viable museum in our county. We also redid our East Gallery, bringing this lovely carriage donated by Larry Brethauer into here, and moving our Huckster Wagon, one of our favorite display items, over to this area, and then constructing a small farmer's market area. We love the new video screen and projection system we installed at the end of People Make the City. We are so proud to be the first museum in the entire world to host this new traveling Smithsonian exhibit entitled Play Ball in the Barrios and the Big Leagues. And we want to thank all of the locals who donated photographs from Saginaw Latino baseball history to round out our exhibit. Once again, we want to thank our friends and partners at the Saginaw County Sports Hall of Fame for all the wonderful work they do to keep their part of the museum looking fantastic. And we're also so happy to welcome Saginaw County Sports Hall of Fame President Jack Taney to our board of directors. Jack has a deep and abiding love for both sports history in our county and overall history in our county, and we're so glad to have him as part of our team. One of the improvements we have scheduled for 2021 is here in the West Gallery. This was our local component companion exhibit to the Spirited Exhibit, which talked about prohibition here in the United States. You can see some of the wonderful photographs and artifacts we have from local brewing history here in Saginaw County. But one of our projects for 2021 will be to take these lights that are way up on top in the ceiling here and to drop them down so that they're much lower and closer to the items that are on the wall which will provide much superior illumination for future exhibits. You know, a lot of folks choose to talk about all the things that we lost in 2020 as a result of the pandemic, but you know, some good things did come out of this for the Castle Museum of Saginaw County history. Uh, one of those being that we had to learn how to reach uh, our audience in an entirely new manner. Uh, when we shut down in March, uh, we couldn't do our usual, you know, physical exhibits for people to come in and look at. Um, so we went um, completely digital. And that was with staff meetings, um, conferences, uh, exhibits, everything, you name it. It was all online. Uh, so what that really forced us to do was to learn how to communicate via social media and our website at a much higher degree. Uh, so that's really um, allowed us to reach an entirely new audience that we weren't reaching before. We didn't even know that. Um, and now taking what we've learned uh, in that time period, um, we can couple that with our current physical exhibits that are open to the public again to come into the museum and see. And it really makes a nice combination of um, in-person and online content. Hello, this is Tom Trombley, Vice President and Chief Historian at the Castle Museum. And I had to select one of the projects on which I worked this year. And the one I selected was an exhibit we did um, focusing on the Mershon and Morley portable houses that were constructed in Carleton, Michigan. And it really brings together all of the aspects that I do with my job and so enjoy um, doing research, but also working with our team to bring the exhibit to life and also working with our volunteers who were working remotely to build this wonderful little model of a Mershon Morley portable house. So I look forward to a really wonderful year in 2021. Thanks so much for your support of the museum. Take care. Hi friends.
friends, this is Ashley Zender. I'm the Office and Accounting Manager at the Castle Museum. Most of my work is done behind the scenes. I take care of all of our finances, our um, bills, our day-to-day -day operations, making sure that we have everything we need to keep the Castle Museum running smoothly. Hi, I'm Sandy Schwan and I'm the Chief Curator at the Castle Museum of Saginaw County History. I'm responsible for acquiring new artifacts for the museum as well as caring for those already in our collections. Part of my responsibility is to make sure that those artifacts are preserved for future generations as well as making them available for research and exhibition purposes. In 2021, we're really excited to announce that we will be showcasing some of our more fragile artifacts for a limited time only. So I hope you get a chance to stop by and see what we've selected. Hello everyone, I'm Jeff Sommer. I'm the Curator of Archaeology here at the Castle Museum. And I'm down in the archaeology lab in the basement of the museum right now. And on the table behind me, you can see a lot of the material I've been working on. There's everything from artifacts that we excavated last summer in Frankentros and in Bridgeport Township. Um, there's material from a recent donation we received that has artifacts from all over Saginaw County. And then there's an older collection I pulled out that I'm just trying to more fully document. And all this is part of our efforts to learn more about the history of Saginaw County and to share it all with you. So I am really looking forward to warmer weather and the chance to get back out and do more field work. But in the meantime, you can see I've got a lot to keep me busy. Um, I hope to see you all again really soon. Uh, take care, everyone. Hi, everybody. I'm Jeff Cottrell, the registrar for the Historical Society of Saginaw County. Some of the things I'm working on this year are continuing education, working on inventorying part of the collection, and we're also trying to find ways to utilize the space that we have to its fullest capacity. Hello everyone, my name is Jeffrey Palke. I am the exhibits coordinator here at the Castle Museum. 2020 was interesting and challenging in my department in many ways. Uh, for the first part of the year, right after we got our traveling exhibit from the Smithsonian, uh, this is the way we were. Uh, we, went, we went dark to the public for most of that, most of that time. And while we were at home doing uh, work for the museum, I, I transitioned into creating digital and uh, film uh, videos for presentation online, which uh, was essential in preparation for uh, the upcoming millage vote, which we successfully passed. Uh, and while the museum was dark for most of the year, uh, it was it was not an unproductive year in exhibits. We did manage to have three traveling exhibits and we managed to complete 10 smaller in-house exhibits that had piled up over that time period of, of being closed to the public uh, in a very short amount of time. So when we do reopen, there will be a lot, uh, when, we, when we are fully open to the public and everything is rolling again around here, we will have quite a bit new to see. In 2021, there are a few projects coming in that I am excited about. Uh, there's a few, exhibit areas that are going to be receiving some new lighting. Uh, we are going to uh, attempt to bring some new signage and wayfinding, uh, wayfinding throughout the museum. So it'll be easier to find your way through the museum with new signage. And then uh, we are going to start tackling some exhibits on the upper level that haven't changed in quite a while. So if you haven't been down in a while, we hope you come down soon and, and come see what we've done. Uh, we hope to see you soon. Thank you. Hi, I'm Christy Furtaw, the Education Coordinator here at the Castle Museum. In 2020, I created a teacher resource page for the Castle Museum website. I also sent out monthly emails to the teachers of Saginaw County offering teacher websites on Michigan history. I also wrote a grant for the Castle, which we were awarded $25,000. Um, in the summertime, I went to some summer events in Merrill and in Freeland, and throughout that time, I participated in meetings, went to um, some webinars, and helped out at the museum as much as I could. Hi everyone, my name is Jacqueline Leach and I am the Public Relations and Event Coordinator here at the Castle Museum of Saginaw County History. I am the face behind the computer when it comes to all things social media and updating the website. And I also design things like the newsletter and the annual report booklet. 
For 2021, I'm really excited because I'm going to be collaborating with our exhibits coordinator, Jeff Pelkey, to work on some of the signage for the museum, and I look forward to meeting all of you guys when it's safe to do so. Hi there, my name is Barbara Dewey, and uh, I'm the custodian here at the Castle Museum, and it's a pleasure to work in such a cool-looking building. Um, I'm going on my 25th year here at the Castle Museum, so you can tell I really do enjoy what I do here. Thank you. Hi, my name is Deanna Coleman. I work at the front desk here at the Castle Museum. I also do the weekly recipes on Sunday that are posted on Facebook. Uh, come into the Castle Museum and you'll be able to see us. Hi, I'm Janine Shading and I'm a greeter slash security here at the, at the Castle. I've been here about three years now. Um, came here after I retired from another job and I really like it here. I was born and raised in Saginaw, so this is um, like a walking down memory lane. So you need to come in and see us. Castle Museum. I am a history student at Saginaw Valley State University and I'm so thankful for the opportunity that the Castle Museum has given me to gain experience in um, my future career field. Here at the Castle Museum, we recognize that we could not do all the wonderful things we do to preserve our history without the help of an army of volunteers. Unfortunately, 2020 presented some real challenges for that. Uh, the COVID uh, pandemic really limited the ability of people to attend in person and volunteer. Um, we typically have a swarm of folks over across the street at the Annex on a daily basis, uh, helping to enter data into our uh, database. And um, that, for the safety of both the volunteers and for our workers, we just couldn't do that this, for most of this past year. That being said, we still had uh, nearly 80 volunteers that combined for over 1,700 hours of volunteer service. And for that, we are very appreciative. And each year we like to single out one or two of those volunteers to recognize uh, as Volunteer of the Year. This year, uh, it happens to be a couple, and that is Tom and Jill Stevens. Tom has been working with us for several years now, constructing exhibits. Uh, you can see his handiwork throughout the museum, and one of the favorite things, uh, my favorite things that Tom does are these miniatures, and you can see one of those on display right now if you come in and see the Mershon Morley portable housing exhibit. He built a full-scale miniature uh, replica of a Mershon Morley portable house. Uh, wonderful work, Tom. Really appreciate it, uh, and, uh, and uh, you know, appreciate your skill as well. Jill has been a huge help with uh, collections and in exhibits. She uh, has done a lot of research using various directories and particularly in identifying locations of buildings that are involved in exhibits or particular collections. Um, and so Jill has done a lot of work for us recently in that capacity. So we thought this is an opportunity to recognize both of you for your hard work at the museum. So thank you so much again to Jill and Tom Stevens. And we hope that you'll join us next year at the annual meeting so that we can actually bring you up in front of the crowd of members and get a nice round of applause for you because we sure appreciate all the hard work you've done for the museum. And folks, that wraps up our annual meeting for the year 2020. Thank you again for watching this. Uh, we would love to have you come visit the museum in person. Again, we are open uh, normal business hours right now. If you're interested in volunteering, uh, becoming a member, simply go to our website, www.castlemuseum.org, uh, and you can find out all the information you need to know about doing either one of those things. Uh, if you want to keep up on daily operations and what's happening with exhibits and interesting facts, um, Facebook is a great way to do that. So you can check out our Castle Museum of Saginaw County History Facebook page. And again, thank you folks for all of your support um, this past year in 2020. It was a challenge, uh, but it brought out uh, some, some, some of the best in this all. So thank you for unifying behind us. Thank you for pushing us across that line with the millage. Thank you for your support all year, and we look forward to working with you again in 2021.